You can't dance while I say this twice. I'm currently at my job Giving a presentation to my boss I love the sun and I hear a grunt Coming straight through my muddy colon Oh my god, oh my god My poop is touching my asshole from the inside I feel it coming, oh my poop is touching my asshole from the inside I feel it coming, oh my poop is touching my asshole from the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 158. What did you say? You said 158? Yeah, and I'll say it again, brother. Because today is a day like no other on this fine feathered, p- feathered podcast. Just feathering it, brother. Um, Because we have a guest, okay? And this guest is not just any guest. This guest is a guest that you would have never guessed that I would have on as a guest. Okay? This is someone that I would have never guessed that I would have a guest on that was this guest in particular. Okay? And this guest is this guy. Those freaking needles. That guy. I don't want to cue puncher no more. When I made this soundboard and I put Kyle C on my soundboard, I would have never guessed that a few months later he would be a guest on the fucking podcast. And now he this that's our guest. Kyle C is on this episode. And I'm and I'm recording this intro post the episode so we already recorded the episode and it went great it went way better than expected he even sang some songs at the end some brand new unreleased songs uh two of which were directed directly towards ymh so yeah we'll talk we talk about all that we talk about his life growing up we talk about the acupuncture and how it actually happened you know how it actually affected him we talk about his experience with YMH. Yeah, there's there's a lot of shit we talk about. And pretty well the whole time, the whole time <laughs> in between segments, he's like swatting flies away. So look forward to that. He's really going hard on these flies with a t-shirt. Anyway, um, that's it for the intro. Please enjoy this episode and hopefully I can get more and more guests. I'm hoping for Shoe Nice next. So let's make it happen, baby! All right, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The first official interview on the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. I know I've had guests before, but it's only been once, and I think it was on episode four. So now we're back, and uh, we're better than ever, baby. Okay, so I got, um, I got, I got my, I got a good pal here, a good friend of mine. You may have seen him. On YMH, uh, he is most specifically uh, known for his 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 one song. Um, uh, what that? What is it? Acupuncture no more. Yeah, it is the one and only Kyle C, ladies and gentlemen. How's it Hi. going? <laughs> Great to have you on on the podcast. Thank you, thank you so much. I've I've been wanting to um, get on a, you know, on a on a on these kinds of uh, shows, uh, you know, for a very long time now. To I don't know, let people know uh, about me, you know, as a, as a person at, at a personal level, and uh, this is a great opportunity. Uh, for me to do that so yes of course it's a it's a great opportunity for the both of us uh obviously i've been trying to have guests 
on this on this podcast for a long ass time and uh it's never it's never you know i've never managed to get anyone on uh so you know i'm heading in the right direction now so uh let's talk about ymh first because that's that's really where you 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 uh got your fame from they really helped you out a lot now uh when you were featured on YMH they perceived your songs as though you you were you know like some sort of some guy who was TikToked and they figured you were taking yourself way too seriously but obviously you're not your songs are comedy right it's a, it's a comedy perspective yeah yeah, yeah. of course so um, um, oh, oh. I have to say, I might be a little bit TikTok, you know, you never know, but, um... Yeah, well, according but, to Dr. Drew, you're a little rapey. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that, you know, um, I don't really get, you know, my, much interaction, you know, with, like, women to, to, like, represent a danger, you know, to them, and aside from that, uh, you know, my I believe my mom raised me, you know, right. And uh, you know, I'm I'm way better than that. I, I'm by no means, you know, uh, you know, a rapist. Yeah, no, of course, of, of course, you know. So, when you found out that you were featured on YMH, how did that make you feel? And how did you find out you were featured on YMH? Well, um, basically, I didn't know anything about the show, um, you know, the, of its existence. So somebody, you know, posted the link to, to the episode where I was featured uh, on one of, my, one of my YouTube videos. And, uh, you know, once I realized what had happened, I was extremely excited. I started, like, screaming out of excitement because... It's been a very long time, you know, for me, you know, f um, that I've tried, you know, to get my songs out there, you know, and to try to, I've been basically, I've been very aggressive in, in like, you know, my, my marketing strategy. Basically, what I do is, is in, by the way, I want to apologize in advance, you know, to the people that I might, might have being affected by, by this strategy of mine. But basically what I do is I, I tend to like, you know, spam, you know, like popular accounts, you know, um, on, on Twitter and, and things of that nature. So I basically post links, you know, to my songs, um, on these uh, as reply, as a reply to, to, you know, posts that or Twitter posts that these, you know, popular accounts, um, you know, to popular Twitter accounts, um, you know, make and uh, yeah. So that's, that's basically been my, my marketing strategy. I don't know how the, the YMH team found me, uh, but I'm so, so thankful and so grateful that they decided to, you know, uh, basically give me the, the, you know this type of exposure right. so yeah so were you were you using this marketing strategy before ymh discovered you is that how you think they discovered you um it might have been you know because um i've been doing it for like oh my god for like four to five years you know ever since i started you know like recording songs and stuff like i would i, I was i've been you know doing that to you know um Right. And so you say that you've spammed them aggressively uh, through emails or whatever. Have they ever actually got in touch with you since that one time you were featured on there? No, I mean, um, what, I, what, I'm, what, I'm trying to, what I've been trying to say is that my marketing strategy is aggressive in, in the sense that I... I reply to mentions or to posts uh, from, let's say, America's Got Talent, you know, Twitter account, uh, e entertainment television, things of that sort, you know, accounts that are like, you know, popular and, and watched by a lot of people. So I basically reply to, to posts from these accounts 
uh, with with the link right. to my songs, and that's that's how I believe um, you know my my YouTube channel um, you know was uh, somehow uh, viewed or watched by by the YMH team. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Okay, so. so but but since then, since you've been featured on YMH. Have they ever mentioned you again? Have they ever talked about you again? Have they ever reached out to you personally? Um, no, I mean, I, but at the same time, I am so grateful, you know, to, for, for what they did for me that I, I don't mind if they, if they don't, you know, the fact that they haven't reached, reached out to me or, you know, replied to any of my emails because I've actually sent them uh, a bunch of you know emails, um, letting letting them know about you know who I am as a person and whatnot. Um, they they have not replied you know to any of my emails, but I don't I, I don't mind at all because I I mean I'm extremely grateful and I will be forever grateful to them you know because of the the promotion that they've given me so far. You know, like for for starters, at the beginning they they played my acupuncture song, right? Acupuncture no more song, and then um, after that they played the Let's Have Sex song, and then finally uh, they played the the song that I the acapella that I sent them about Charo, uh, Tom Tom Segura's mom. So um, so yeah, I mean I'm so grateful. I'm honestly. I don't care if they don't reply, you know, to my messages. I'm very thankful to them for sure. Right. And so obviously to this day you're you're you continue to be a fan of YMH, right? Yeah. Yeah. But before that you didn't even know they existed. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um so uh with your marketing strategy of commenting on, on at SNL and and uh, other famous Twitter accounts, does that has that ha ever helped you? Ever aside from what YMH did? Not really. However, I don't have any other strategy or option. You know, like I'm I'm a very poor, you know guy from Venezuela and I don't have that many resources, you know, so that like the only, the only resource that I have is my internet connection, which by the way is very slow <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. in my will, you know, to, to, to send those tweets, you know? Right. So, well, one of the, one of the biggest key factors of making it big on social media is, is to be persistent and be, consistent in your uploads and everything you do it's one of the things that i've always said and promoted on my channel although my channel is extremely smaller than yours and pretty well everyone's on the platform i mean i shouldn't be the one giving out advice here but i uh, you know i've been on i've been on youtube for a long time and i'm, I'm i i see and i i um you know i observe what the other successful YouTubers have done, and I try to implement that myself. And I gotta say, what you're doing is actually pretty clever. And I feel like one of these days, it's gonna actually pay off for you. Um, but with that being said, I want to talk about the acupuncture. Your song, your song, Acupuncture No More, uh, it, it really dictates a, uh, you know, a scenario that happened to you that not a lot of people can relate to. You had a bad experience with acupuncture. Can you talk about what exactly happened? Okay, so <laughs> that was a long time ago that, that this, you know, event, tragic event happened. And, um, but it, you know, it affected me for a very long time. And, uh, you know, up until this day, I, I experience you know, symptoms here and there, but they're not as intense as, as they once were. So I'm very, you know, grateful for the recovery that I've had for sure. 
Uh, but basically, it all started in November of 2014, and I basically accompanied my mom to see these um, acupuncturists. That it, you know, um, he happens to he he's from Thailand, but he happens to live down here in Venezuela. And um, you know, my mom had some pain on one of her knees, and she she wanted to get treated with alternative medicine. So we went there, and then. Um, you know, I was in the waiting room and all of a sudden the guys, the old man's wife came out to the waiting room and she was like, you too, you too, you know, like in, in Spanish, in Spanish, but with a Thai accent, right? So she looked, these people, keep in mind, these people were very old and, you know, they were very cute. And I mean, they seemed very cute and very endearing, you know, because they talked like, you know, like babies, basically, you know, they, they couldn't really, you know, uh, speak Spanish very well. And um, I just, you know, they seemed nice. I So I accepted the invitation. Little did I know after I, you know, I had my first acupuncture treatment ever with this guy, with this person, um, I, you know, started experiencing ED problems, you know, erectile dysfunction problems. And, um, I also started to experience a lot of, uh, weakness, you know, gen generalized weakness. So th those were the first two symptoms that I developed after the first acupuncture, you know, treatment. So the, the thing is, the thing was though, that, I was so desperate at the time, you know, that my logic when, you know, haywire, you know, like I thought that by, that if I found or the, yeah, that if I found yet another acupuncturist, that that person would somehow be able to reverse whatever this first guy did to me, this Asian, you know, person, you know, old guy uh, did to me. So Sadly, I was very wrong about it because, you know, I was, yeah, after, basically after the second treatment that I had with the second acupuncturist, I started to experience a lot of muscle pain, you know, very, like a lot of, all of my, like my muscles all over my body hurt like a bitch, you know, like kind of like, you know, when you take a long break from exercising and then all of a sudden one day you decide to, you know, uh, run like an entire marathon and what, like, you know, exercise like hardcore style. And then the following day you wake up like feeling super sore. Well, that, that was the feeling, but it happened. It started to happen every single day. So I was feeling not only was I, was I, was I feeling weak and I couldn't have erections, but now I also started experiencing like muscle pain, like generalized pain. And, um, you know, unfortunately I kept, you know, I, I think it might be insane, you know, because, you know, the, basically the def definition of insanity is, you know, doing the same thing and thinking that you're going to, you know, exp like have like a different result. So I basically, um, looked for another acupuncturist, right. And this person was like extremely, or is still is, I don't know. Uh, very famous in the in the field in the acupuncture field and um, I mean famous here in, in my home country obviously um, so you know she she's basically a, this is a lady normally like a 60 year old lady and um, she's um, she she's a natural doctor she's a natural physician but she specialized in acupuncture later on like I, in fact when i went to see her for the first time she showed me like you know her like all of her diplomas and all of her you know uh experience she said that she had studied acupuncture in china and that she, she was like a true expert in the subject after i so basically when I started seeing this woman, this, this person, I had several sessions with her, not just one, but several. And on each session, she started to fucking insert needles all over my head. I mean, as, aside from the needles that usually go around the body, she would puncture my, my head, 
you know, from like the, the back of my head, the, the top, like even my cervical, like my neck and my throat, like she would puncture absolutely everything, you know, in my body. <coughs> and it wasn't like a little, a little, you know, puncture, you know, like, a like she had these, she used these like super long needles and she would like, you know, shove them in like, like really deep, you know? And, um, sadly after I, I went through this, you know, treatment, this third treatment, you know, acupuncture treatment with this lady, I started developing, developing, um, you know, cognitive, uh, problems. I, I couldn't talk. I, I started, um, stuttering. And I also um, couldn't, I, I also started finding it really hard to read and to count items and, um, you know, do math operations, you name it. I also, you know, um, would stumble upon, like I would, I, I became super clumsy and I would, you know, bump into walls, doors, door frames, you name it. And um, so, yeah, man, like, you know, it, the symptoms that I develop, you know, overall were so many, so many that when I started going to, you know, normal, normal doctors, you know, like, yeah, normal, like psychiatrists, because I had to go to like so many, you know, I had to go to psychiatrists, psychologists, um, and endocrinologists, like a bunch of people started to, you know, to, to treat, to see me, you know, to, cause I was, I needed some, some type of like help, you know, and fix. Um, so no, they, my symptoms were so many that, um, nobody could help me out. And it wasn't until like two years later, two years into the, you know, into this horrible traumatizing experience that I found uh, or well, I was uh, let's say recommended by one of the the shrinks that I that I saw. He recommended me a treatment called uh, TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. And uh, after I went through these you know TMS treatments, I was able to recover my speech. I was able to recover a little bit of strength, you know, like muscle strength. My my muscle pain also has has. Um, you know, decreased a lot. And, um, I still experience, you know, pro like, you know, muscle pain, you know, uh, on a daily basis. But, it, but like I said, it's not as intense as, as they used to be, as it used to be, uh, before I used to cry out of, you know, like I would w wake up in the middle of the night crying, you know, because of the horrible pain. Like I felt as if, as if, as if I was, I had been run over, run over by a truck or something. So it was, it was really tough, you know, for me, but, um, but yeah, hopefully I'm, you know, thankfully though, I'm, I'm, I, I have, um, I've, I've had a 90% recovery and, you know, hopefully, you know, things will get better from now on. So, yeah. Yeah. That's really, that's, you know, it's so interesting because, you know, we hear people talk about these alternative medicines, but they really don't know exactly what they're doing, you know? And so, uh, would you say acupuncture is just a big crock of shit and people should avoid it completely? Or do you think it can be beneficial to people? Well, I mean, my, my personal experience was horrible. And I, I've also heard about other people that have, you know, gone through acupuncture malpractice. But, um, you know, to each their own, you know, to uh, so like, you know, I guess there are some people that, you know, can find it beneficial. I guess it, it also depends on the acupuncturist, you know, that you that you, you know, end up, uh, you know, seeing. Uh, or that ends up seeing you and uh yeah you know it's i don't know man it, yeah. i don't recommend it obviously you yeah. know i'm i'm done with the fucking needles you know? yeah so uh has your mother experienced anything like this no she's she's been like you know she was 
she had that treatment, you know, with this old person, or like the Asian guy, and um, she didn't she didn't get better, but she didn't get worse either. So she got lucky, you know. And also because she doesn't have a dick, you know, so, you yeah. know, I, I have a dick. So, you know, I started to experience, you know, like, uh, ED problems. So, yeah. you but, know, but you were experiencing, um, you were experiencing other problems other than just ED yeah. though. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, basically, uh, weakness, like generalized weakness, you know? So basically if I walked like two blocks, you know, I would start to, to feel like super heavy, you know, my legs would start to feel like very heavy. My entire body would feel, and I would feel like very exhausted. And so, yeah. Right. Um, now, uh, what, where was I going with this? Yeah. Um, so has your mother, was that your mother's first time doing acupuncture as well? Or does she do it a lot before this? She didn't do it a lot. But she had done it in the past. She had done it in the in the past, but she didn't she didn't do it a lot. You know, she had another friend that used to treat her with that. Um, but this time, it was the first time she had seen that she she was gonna see this doctor, and that's why. Or well, she he wasn't a doctor actually. He was just some man from Thailand, and she heard of this guy, and she wanted to you know get treated with him and. It all went downhill from there, you know? Right. So, so, was the acupuncture song your first song you created? No. No. So, you, um, you were doing music before that, then? Not really. Um, but, you know, I, I guess I started to do... Like, okay, so basically I had other plans in my life, okay? Because I basically, I, I I went to college in the U.S. And that's pretty much why I, you know, I can speak English a little bit. Um, so after I came back from the U.S., I, I've, I've had, I had other plans, you know, which basically consisted on, on me, you know, trying to, to you know, working to, to start working working as a, as an English teacher and, and things of that nature. But, um, after the acupuncture treatment, since I couldn't do, you know, pretty much anything at all, um, I couldn't have, I, I mean, at that point I, I couldn't really, you know, uh, apply for any type of job because I, I was basically useless, you know? And that's when I started to write songs and kill time like that, you know, kill. Yeah. Uh, kill my my free time like you know doing that but no that the first song that i wrote was not about you know the the acupuncture thing it, it was about other ones and then you know after a while i i you know, i started i i wrote about you know my my experience with acupuncture so. right so wh what did you go to school for while you were in america so I first um, started, I started college in, at Iowa Western Community College. And um, I, I wanted to study so sociologists, so sociology. Um, but then after a couple of semesters, I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like the, you know, the, the, the facilities, the, the college, you know, per se. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I just felt like I was in the middle of nowhere, you know, in Iowa. And I, I, apo I apologize if, I, if I'm offending anybody, you know, watching this. Um, but I just didn't like, you know, Iowa. And I moved to Minneapolis. And I started college at Minneapolis Commun Community and Technical College. And on there, I changed my major to uh, theater. So I was able to, you know, complete an AFA degree in theater. And uh, so I have a, I hold a, a, an associate's degree in theater. And then um, I transferred all of my credits to the University of Minnesota. And um, to, but I was basically, I, I tried to pursue a, a bachelor's in English on there. So I, I kind of changed majors, you know, I, I used, um, 
MCTC as a kind of like a trampoline or something like a you know um yeah like, like as a way for me to to like you know finish all the the basic you know um credits and, and, and you know number of credits uh, you know and uh for to in order for me to get my bachelor's in english and um so after a couple of semesters at the u of m university of minnesota i I had to, I, I came back to my home country because I, I, I had gone, not because I was, you know, not because of finan financial reasons, but because I had gone through like a breakup and I just couldn't, I, I just, you know, uh, there, there was, uh, you know, I, I went through a heartbreak, so, you know, some kind and um, I went back, I moved back to my home country and um I lived here for like six months and then I returned to the U.S. But this time I went to uh, California and I, I started, um, uh, you know, my I, I continued basically uh, my batch, my the bachelor's program at California State University, Long Beach. And um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, but oh, so I, you know, after a semester there, I ran out of money and then I started to experience, you know, financial problems. And then I had to move back to my home country for good. And I, I didn't have, you know, so basically I was like three semesters shy of finishing a bachelor's in English. And that really fucked me up, you know, like emotionally and, and, but, um, I had to, you know, deal with it, and uh, yeah. So, so did you have did you have any goals? Like, did you want to pursue something with this uh, fine arts degree, or was it something you just did because it was an option to do? It was well, first, like I, I just wanted to learn and experience the Amer American culture. So I just thought that by going into or by studying uh, theater, I would be able to, you know, to get to know people at a, at a more personal level. Cause you know, we, in, on, um, when you're like in those uh, scenarios where you have to, you know, like act out, you know, like a character or whatever. I don't know. You get to see, you know, people make like a fool of themselves and, you know, the, 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 the fun side of, of people tend to like come out and people are very friendly, you know, like people that, that study uh, theater. And um, yeah. I, you know, I enjoyed my time for sure, but it was mostly, I did that though. I, I, I studied, you know, I, I studied theater in reality because I just wanted to finish up all the, the basic credits, you know, the credit units that, you know, that were required for me to complete a, a bachelor's degree eventually. So after I finished the, 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 you know, the, my time on, at MCTC, I, tr like I said, I transferred to the U of M and my plan was basically to get a bachelor's in English and then come back to my home country to try to, you know, uh, teach English basically. So, right. So did you do a lot of partying? Did you make a lot of friends up there in America? Um, I was kind of, well, I don't know if I was perceived as kind of like a loner, but, um, at the, like at the beginning, it was kind of hard, you know, for me to, you know, learn about or adapt to adapt to the American culture. And, uh, so yeah, <laughs> you know, at the beginning it was, it was really tough after a few years because I, I the the entire time that you know that i was studying in the u.s it was about five and a half years so you know after a few years i was finally able to to start making you know some friends and um i don't i don't have like i, I didn't keep in touch with any of them by the 
you know, uh, however, you know, after I, I came back to my home country, but I was able to, you know, hang out and enjoy, you know, the, the bar scene and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah, because I noticed in your tragic and pathetic life video, you mentioned that you, you like to spend a lot of time at clubs in Venezuela. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. okay. So, so basically, when I le left for the U.S., I was already 22 years old. So I had basically done my time here, you know, as a, as a, in, in my home country, as a, as a teenager, basically, and as a, as a party animal, so to speak. Well, I don't want to call myself a party animal, but like, you know, those years, you know, the, the youth years where, where you think that, you know, you can, you're like the, I don't know, uh, invincible. I don't know, man, that, that, that the world is your oyster and that you can do whatever you want, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah, so I had, I had my group of friends here and I, we, we went out a lot and, um, but uh, yeah, so. Right. And have you... Oh, hold, hold on a second, there's like a fly down here and I need to like... <laughs> okay, get that fly. Thanks. Flies, yeah. There's nothing worse than a fly flying around your room, especially when you during a podcast when you're required to talk and there's a fly flying around in your face. It's it's okay for those listening. Kyle C right now has left the vicinity and he's killing. Okay, he's back. He's back. <laughs> All right, where was I? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Have you partaked in alcohol or drugs ever? Well, um, you know, dur during my youth years, you know, the, the, I don't know, when I was like 18, 19, um, I, I, I tried, uh, how do you call that, weed for like a couple of times. And that was pretty much it. So, yeah, I I don't even like the smell either way, so... I love the smell. I'm not into, I'm not into drugs or anything. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, not it's not for everyone. But let me tell you, if you do try it one day and you have a good experience... See, that, that's, that's generally what it is. You try it and you have a good experience and then that, then it's good, then it's right for you. You try it and you have a shitty experience, then it's not for you. I mean, that's just, that's the way it goes. And um, I'm not, you know, people people are always so concerned about whether or not people try drugs or alcohol. And, and, you know, especially in Canada, in Alberta, where I'm from, if you don't drink alcohol at a party, you might as well leave because <laughs> the entire everyone at the party is just going to shit on you and say you're pathetic, you know? But it's um, so like where I'm from, it's kind of it's part of our culture to actually drink alcohol when you're like 16, <laughs> and, you know, so like what is what's the legal drinking age in Venezuela? Is there even one? So what, what you're saying is kind of like peer pressure. Yeah, you know? it's peer exactly pressure. peer pressure. So over here, you're you're legally uh, you're you can legally drink at 18 years old. Okay. So and you can go to you know enter bars and, and clubs and stuff when you know as long as you're 18. Yeah, that's that's the same in Alberta, but the rest of Canada it's 19 years old, and then in America it's 21. And it's weird because like you you can dr you can drink at 18 years old or no you i mean in america you can't drink until you're 21 but you can still vote and participate in <laughs> in elections and whatnot when you're 18 it's really strange how they do things over there and it's uh p the people will actually from america will come up if they live close to the border they'll come to canada when they're 18 just so they can drink that happens all the time <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's yeah, hilarious yeah so 
Um, why did you start singing? Is that something you've always done as a kid? Is it something you've always wanted to do? Well, um, not really. I mean, I, I don't, I've always wanted to. Yeah, I've always wanted to sing, but I've always known that I have a very crappy voice, you know? Like, I don't... Like, I guess, you know, I started finding it really cool, you know, when I was four or five years old, you know, to, to sing and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I kind of forgot about it, you know, because, like, I was, I, I knew, I've always known that I'm not a good singer. So, um, but, you know, after I went through the, you know, the acupuncture malpractice and, and whatnot, I... It kind of like I re- this um, I don't know how to call it this passion of mine um, kind of rekindled, you know, and uh, I you know I started to to sing again and to to write songs and and like by the way all of my content is one hundred percent original. I write my own songs and because th- you see this is how I started to spend my time my free time i had a bunch of free time on my hands and that's how i you know came up started coming up with like a bunch of crazy ideas you know for for songs and that's why my lyrics are could be considered you know like insane basically (laughs) yeah Yeah. a lot a lot of your songs are kind of centered around sex or sexual acts or like buttholes or or you know (laughs) weird shit like that so What's what's, <laughs> what's what's the deal with that? Why 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 is that your choice of genre? Well, <laughs> I I know why it is, and the thing is, <laughs> basically, what happens is that the the process of creation, you know, that I go through is I usually come up with all of these ideas while I'm either taking a shit or while I'm taking a shower. So the, since these are like the most intimate moments, you know, that you could, that any person could have um, in their lives, I, you know, it just sort of happens, you know, I, you just basically, you see your dick, you see your own dick, and then, you know, you start coming up with like, uh, you know, lyrics, you know, about any, about a song, you know, you, you know, uh, um, that that talks about dicks. Oh man, I, forgive my English. You no, know, I fine. suck at it. No, your 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 English is perfectly fine. And it's funny you talk about the shower and shitting and getting ideas because that is you know that's one of my own personal techniques. Uh, and not only mine, but it's a lot of people's. If you actually pay attention to what these YouTubers have said throughout the years, and and not just YouTubers, anyone. The sh- to sit in the shower, it's a space where you're alone, you're confined in a room, there's hot water dripping down your spine, <laughs> and you got nothing to do but to think. So that's really when the ideas come to you, and when you're taking a shit, you know? You got that stinky smell going up your nose, you, get, you got nothing else to do but to read the back of a shampoo bottle, unless you bring your cell phone in there, which is what most people do nowadays. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of my ideas have come from while I was sitting on the toilet taking a shit or or in the shower. There's this YouTuber named Make Me Bad 35. He doesn't make much videos anymore, but he was one of the OG YouTubers. And he, every one of his videos, his hair was wet. He would make sketch comedy, and his hair was always wet. And people would always comment about it and be like, why is your hair always wet? And he and he replied once and he said, it's because my ideas come to me while I'm taking a shower. And so they come to him and he jumps on that idea and immediately makes the video right as he comes out of the shower. And I feel like that's really important. You got to you got to you got to capture those ideas in the moment or you're going to lose them. And, you know, even if even if you just take the time to write it down and then, you know, save it for later. Dreams are also another great way to come up with ideas. Lewis Carroll, the guy who wrote 
uh what the hell is that alice in wonderland that was all a lucid dream that he had and it's an amazing story and that's just one example of many um yeah (laughs) i was supposed to transition into something and now i can't remember so i'm just going to move on to something else here uh who is aaron (laughs) <laughs> oh man you have a, you have a song so, you have a song called aaron and i'm just curious who aaron is so basically she's a friend that i met or she's a girl that i met on instagram and you know she she's basically well, she told me that she's, you know, that she enjoys, you know, my songs and um, we've gotten very close, you know, to each other because, you know, we've sent messages and, and very nice messages, you know, to, to each other. And uh, she she knows about my my financial struggles down here in Venezuela. And she was very kind enough to help me you know, with a $50 donation via PayPal. And, uh, you know, after she did that, I felt compelled to, to write a song for her and, you know, about her and for her. So I know the lyrics of the song are like, you know, very, um, you know, could be considered sexual and could be considered crazy as fuck. So that's but, your brand. Um, she likes, yeah, but that's my brand. And that's, you know, she likes, she told me from the get go that she loves my style. And, you know, when I, when I recorded this song, when I posted this song online, she told me that she loved it, you know, cause she, she already knew my style and, um, I made it for her basically that the song, you know, I, so yeah. Cool. See, I was kind of thinking maybe she was like an ex-girlfriend or something, but you know, <laughs> no. obviously, obviously not. But that's cool that she liked the song. I mean, so she didn't. It's not like she paid you specifically to make the song. You just surprised her with a the song, then. Yeah. Well, she. Well, actually, we had already talked. About, like she had already asked me in the past. Because I've known her for like, I don't know, like a year or something. And uh, so she had already mentioned it in the past, but I've always like put it off, you know, like I, I always, you know, told her, you see, you know, I've had, I have these other, you know, songs that I need to, you know, finish and that I need, that I need to record. So I'm going to get to your song, but, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time. So I was always like putting it off, you know. And, uh, but you know, so, but when she did made this, uh, $50 donation, I, I just, you know, I couldn't resist, you know, but to, I don't know, give back, you know, and, and, and yeah, like, uh, I don't know, make this, this for her. Right. Right. Well, that is, that is a pretty big donation. I mean, $50. Yeah. Do you think it helped me? Do you think, uh, do you think she's, uh, do you think you could pursue a relationship with her? Do you think she's trying to get into your, slide into your DMs and, you know, do you think that, is she even, is she even the same age as you or is she like 16 or something? No, she's, she's 38. She's 38 and, um, um, yeah, I, I usually go for older women, so right so yeah. she is older than you she is i'm 34 i mean sorry i'm i'm turning 34 in uh, july 19th and right. uh that's my birthday so yeah you actually you look a lot younger than 34 i wouldn't have guessed you were 34 years old yeah yeah <laughs> i know i know and that's pretty cool you know because like if i ever I don't know. I, I've always uh, thought that, you know, if, if I'm ever presented with the opportunity to perhaps, you know, get into into the entertainment industry and whatnot, I could easily, you know, portray a, 
a younger character, you know, like a, yeah. perhaps like a, I don't know, someone in their 20s and stuff. Yeah, you totally could pull that off. Did now did you did you guys when you were doing the 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 theater degree was there like any singing involved in that? No. 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 But however, no, but it did help me a lot, you know, in terms of getting used to the stares, you know, people staring at me, you know, like cuz you know, you you have an audience, right? And you need to I don't know, make a fool out of yourself, you know, and uh, yeah, in front of people. So you lose, don't get me wrong, at the beginning, it was really hard, you know, for me, you know, to get used to, to those, those, types of, those types of situations. But, um, you know, you get used to it and, and then, you know, you, you, it, it, it's interesting though, because like you feel the energy, you know, the, the stairs, you know, so you know how like Superman has this like power, you know, the X-ray vision or whatever, the, the laser that he, sh he shoots out of his yeah. eyes or whatever. Yeah. So um, it's kind of like that, you know, like people, people do have these, oh, sorry, people do have these powers. They're not obviously, you know, as, as um, I don't know, uh, how to say this, but you know, they're not like Superman, you know, uh, they're not Superman like, but they are, they're there, you know? Yeah. No, I, I know, I know what you're saying. I did, uh, we had improv class in high school. So there was a lot of shit like that where people had to stare at you. And let me tell you, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoy acting and making a fool of myself. I don't like, you know, I'm not the kind of guy to sit there and like do a dramatic scene, but if it's like if it's comedy, I'm all for it. Now, when I was going to Vancouver Film School, I went for writing for film and TV. I dropped out, but while I was there, uh <laughs> you know, there was different categories. There was like the the the, the writers, there was the actors, there was the film producers. Everyone had their own little group that they were in. And let me tell you something. The worst group of them all was the goddamn theater kids. They were the worst. <laughs> because every time you would pass by them, they were either singing, they were singing in the elevator, or they were, you know, fucking dancing in the hallway. They were... <laughs> nobody enjoyed them. But um, it's just weird. It's weird... It's weird how we divide ourselves up like this because we were all going to the same school, but we all had our own thoughts about each other. No matter where you are. Sorry, I think, sorry, I think there's like a delay because um, cause my internet connection is, like I said earlier, is super slow, super yeah. poor, you know, like, so I think there's like a delay. Uh, but anyways, I, you know. Are you like, are you hearing me echoing or something? No, but the the picture, the image, is kind of like, you know, there, there's a there's a little bit of a delay, but it doesn't matter. Right. So, I, I, you know, um, as long as you're like, you know, recording this, you know, continuously, that there, you know. Yeah. There's on, no issue. On, on my end, it's going fine. Okay. As perfect. Long, as long as the audio is not like fucking up to the point where you can't understand me, is that happening? Right. No. 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 It's just the the image. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, now you, you don't have the technology or the equipment or the programs to actually produce any instrumentals or anything in your songs, correct? Yeah, correct. But there was, there is a person, a female, who feels like she was, uh, pretty involved in the production of your music. And she goes by the name of Rose Malay. Can we talk about her? Sure. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, now, I get the sense that, uh, you know, there's a little bit of tension between you two. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, 
Eh, if you can call it that, I, you know, at this point, I mean, you know, I don't really care much, you know, about this person. Um, so basically, about like perhaps a couple of years or a few years ago, she approached me. She saw one of my tweets, you know, one of my comments that I had left on, you know, one of the as a reply to one of AGT, AGT America's Got Talent, you know, Twitter posts. And uh, she replied to one of those telling me that, hey, you know what? You're looking for a, a music producer, right? I can make anything sound better. So, you know, I can work on your on your stuff, you know, and, and make it sound sound good. So because I've always I've always known that I don't I don't have the best vocals out there. You know, I'm fully aware that. I, I, I kind of suck at singing, you know, like I'm not, you know, like, you know, after it can like compared to the Demi Lovato's of the world, you know, the Christina Aguilera's of the world. I mean, I'm a nobody, you know, like I, I suck at singing, you know, compared to, to all these people and, uh, you know, these professional vocalists. So I've always, you know, looked, uh, I've always been in search for, you know, uh, music producers and DJs that might be interested in, in my style, you know, that, you know, would that like enjoy my style and that may be interested in, in helping me, you know, in, you know, in terms of um, auto tuning my songs and, um, you know, oh, hold, hold on a second, like, I need to. I need to do something real quick. I need to turn off the like. The, there's like a water heater. And hold, hold on a second. Yeah. No. Go for it. Turn off that water heater. <laughs> um. Well, let me just fill in this dead air with some words of wisdom. Uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> oh, you know what? I got an automatome here. Why don't we use this bad boy? <laughs> what the hell is that? Uh, that's nothing. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we were talking about Rose. Uh, oh oh yeah. So okay. So she said that she was gonna, you know, um, she was willing to, you know, to to work on my music or my songs, and and you know, and I was like, okay, let, let's go, let's do this. Um, and she ended up auto tuning three of my songs, right? And um, after that, we started working on a on a collaboration. Basically, I wrote a song called that I that I called uh, or that I named uh, Fly Away. And uh, it's, it's, it's very funny that I'm that I'm saying this right now because there's actually like a fly going around, you know, these, and, and like I'm trying to scare it away. So yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fly away. <laughs> <You know? laughs> away from me. So yeah. Um, so I, I wrote this song. I recorded several takes, you know, several... Um, yeah, several takes of this song, and uh, you know the, the a cappella version. I sent it to Rose, and she was supposed to fully produce it. You know, not only was was she supposed to auto tune my my voice, but she was also gonna gonna create instrumentals for it. She was gonna you know do the whole mastering thing. You know, because basically to, to produce any song you not only do you have to like auto tune and create and create instrumentals for it but you also have to do something that is called mastering or something along those lines that I don't really understand you know very well I'm not well versed on, on this subject but um, she basically she ran into she she always she kept telling me that she had that she ran into like that she was running into technical issues and that's why she never, you know, she was never able to 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 pre to finish the the song, and the song was never released. Well, I mean, not at least not from my end. I don't know if she ever you know released you know the song on Spotify or any other platforms. But you know, if she did, that's you know fine by me. You know, I don't I don't care. I'm actually gonna release 
my own version of it, you know, I'm going to post it on, on my YouTube channel, um, you know, not too long from now. I, I'm just waiting for, you know, uh, like final, final, some final edits that, that, you know, it needs. Basically, I have the a cappella version and um, one of the music producers that, um, that created a, a remix out of my acupuncture song um, he he was willing to to help me auto tune my vocals and um, so yeah I, I'm I'm just waiting for the final you know final draft or the final product and and then I'm gonna you know post it upload it on, on YouTube. Right. And now she made a uh, a whole, an entire video called "The Truth About Kyle C." Um. Uh, you know the whole thing the whole video she made is just kind of like really clickbaity and she's not really getting to much of a point but what exactly is her issue with you so the feud between her and her and i and by the way she has like a bunch of feuds with like a lot of other YouTubers, you know, yeah. I'm not the only one that she's gone after, or you know, that she's gone ballistic, you know, for or I, I don't know. Um, so basically, you know, I I had an issue with her because after as soon as I, I was featured on YMH, I was very happy about it, and I I told her. Listen, you know, I'm I, I was featured on this on this sh- I mean, uh, on this popular podcast, and this oh sorry about that. Um, the setup here is horrible. Sorry, no, I have fine. my phone. Okay, so okay, so after you know after I was featured on my image, I told her about it, and she started posting comments she started commenting on the on the comment section you know of, of the of the ymh videos where, where i was featured in and um she she started saying that you know she was my producer and that she um and that i i i sang off tempo and you know that i had this issue you know, when it comes to like singing and that, you know, that it was hard to produce stuff for me because because I, I always sang off tempo or something along those lines. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> you know, like I'm trying to get my name out there and you're not helping me. You know, you're you're not helping the cause. You know, like I, I'm, I'm literally trying to find like, professional producers around the globe you know to the, to help me out you know with my songs and you're basically screwing up all of my chances here so i'm not gonna put up with this shit you know and i i had to call her out you know i i, I had to you know basically let people know listen you know like the pinned comment on my on my acupuncture no more video is is basically you know me letting the world know what these person's problems are and you know oh fuck <laughs> sorry my phone keeps falling of the of the thing that i got it the fuck hold on a second okay so yeah you know she's i don't know she's she was trying to like screw me over and i was like not having it you know basically so that's you know that's yeah. where where it all started. So yeah. And she said you were spamming her with emails and stuff too. Now, did she end up blocking you, or did you block her, or how did that work? Okay, so the story behind that. Okay, so basically we used to communicate via Twitter. You know, like that was our preferred system of communic channel of communication. But the reason why she like on on the expose video or whatever that she made about me, she showed a bunch of emails that I had in fact sent to her, and you know on most of those emails I'm basically giving her some motivational speech that I like 
I basically had to pull much, like a bunch of motivational rhetoric out of my ass, you know, because she used to tell me on Twitter that she was going to kill herself, you know, and that she in that she wanted me to pray for her because she was having a bunch of panic attacks and that she was going to end up, you know, killing herself and, and stuff like that. So since we had, we have these, like, there, there's like a huge age difference between her, her and I, and I just took it upon myself to try to help her out. You know, like I, I thought, like, I just, like, I just view myself as some sort of like a mentor, you know, to her. And, you know, I kept, you know, I, like I started telling her that she, that she had all these amazing potential, you know, just to try, keep in mind, I was just trying to, you know, keep her from ending her life, you know, so right. I was like, you know, trying to help her out, and, you know, but, you know, it, it's, it was just, I don't know, it all backfired on me, because then she made this expose video, and she was like, you know, oh, look at all the, the emails that this guy sent me in, you know, I don't know. She she took advantage of of my you know of those emails basically of my goodwill I guess uh, yeah so right and that's you know that's typical of, of of specific YouTubers nowadays people want the feud because the feud brings in the views and the views gets you the money <laughs> uh it you know it's it's shitty that that happens and I'm you know and I'm sure she's not making that much money as it is anyway if any uh she, you know she doesn't have that big of an audience she kept telling like when she was on Twitter cuz I, I believe she deleted she deleted her her Twitter account when she was on Twitter he kept telling people that she was rich you know that she had rich parents and that her parents you know gave her everything that she wanted and whatnot so you know, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, yeah. I, I don't think she was ever after the money. I think she was always, right. you know, after the uh, fame or yeah. whatever, you know, kind of things. So, yeah. yeah. So it's not, I guess not, I shouldn't have said money, you know. It's not always about the money, but definitely people do these sort of things for the fame, for sure. Um, well, for me, for me, though, it's about the money because I'm poor as fuck, you know. Yeah. I, I have you want to, you know, after a while, after I, you know, became a little bit, after this YouTube thing started to become a little bit serious for me, um, you know, as, as opposed to just, you know, um, as a way for me, as a platform that I could use to like cope with my own problem, you know, with my health issues. And, um, you know, uh, like at the beginning was, was, you know, for, I used, YouTube for that purpose, you know, as, as a platform for me to cope with my own shit and, and to kill time, you know, all the free time that I had on my hands. But, um, after a while, I just, you know, like I started to, to see, you know, um, I don't know. I just, I just wanted, I started wanting it to make this into like a business, you know, right. I don't know. If, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course it does. Um, I mean, fame and money goes hand in hand. You got the fame, you're going to get the money. You know, you got the money, you can get the fame. It's kind of, it's kind, it goes hand in hand. And did, so, so when you started this, you, did you even realize you could make money doing this? Like, did you, were you aware of that fact? There's like a fly going around, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying to like scare it away. No, that's fine. But anyway, yeah. So what were you saying? Sorry. Um, like when you started this whole YouTube endeavor, did you were you aware of the fact that you could actually make money from this, or is that something you figured out later on? I figured out later. I figured that out later on. Um, at, at the beginning, I just, I just wanted to vent pretty much, you know, yeah. uh, my own frustrations and yeah. So, yeah. And so have you seen any income? Are you even a part of the, the YouTube partner program? No, I, I don't even know if I'm, if I'm eligible to like monetize my, my channels. 
my, my channel because um you know keep in mind uh you know most of my videos like the language that i use on most of my videos are not like kid friendly so yeah it doesn't matter you don't, it doesn't matter no so like yes youtube is becoming more and more like um politically correct and you know um very strict on their guidelines but you can still monetize your content even though it's not directed towards children if you notice whenever you upload a video it actually gives you the option to, to say yes this is for kids or no this is for kids and if you select if you if you if you select yes this is for kids on and obviously your content is not for kids then you're going to be demonetized but if you select no it's not for kids you know then you can still monetize to a certain extent there's still specific guidelines that you can still break and the guidelines are so you know they're not concrete you can't really determine what the hell youtube's going to demonetize or what they're going to take down or what they're going to block like they'll they'll remove a video simply for the fact that you may potentially be bullying someone even though that wasn't your you know initial intention so youtube's kind of heading in a bad direction but for the most part you can you can kind of figure it out i mean i've had one of my videos taken down one of my most popular videos i i used to have on this channel was um when i was about maybe 14 years old have you ever seen those halloween costumes where it's like inflatable like there's air so it's like a costume that's like full of air anyway it looked like my costume that i had it was like the grim reaper grabbing me anyway i made it look like the grim reaper was raping me <laughs> and oh, i called man. it raped by the grim reaper and oh, no. it was you know it got lots of views it got lots of attention other other oh, you God. other youtubers actually posted it on their channel because it was quite hilarious and i was only 14 oh. And this was, I posted this way before YouTube had any of its strict guidelines. So it had oh, thousands and thousands of views. And anyway, just like maybe last year or the year before, uh, the algorithm picked it up and it was like, okay, we're, we're removing this from YouTube permanently. It's gone forever. You have five days to, re to re rebuttal this. And so I tried to rebuttal it, but I mean, a 14-year-old kid getting raped in the ass by the Grim Reaper is not something you can really rebut. So I just let him take it. <laughs> um, but I do have an episode of the podcast where I, 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 I'm watching, I'm reacting to the, to the, to that video. So that's the only way to really see it. But yeah, YouTube's a, YouTube's not what it used to be and it sucks, but it's fine. You know, you got to accept the changes. Yeah. I do really miss right. the, I do really miss the old days of YouTube, but whatever. Um Now I notice when you record your videos, sometimes you can hear like your mother in the background or whatever, and even you you mentioned that a few times. Does your mother speak English? No. Uh she does not. And I guess that's that basically is what gives me the freedom to, you know, say whatever the fuck I want on my songs, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah. But even, but even in your videos where you're like on your second channel, where you're just talking to the camera in English, she still has no idea what you're saying. So you could say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Does she know any words in the English language? Not really. Uh, hello, I guess. I don't know. Um, <laughs> where, where's where's the bath? Where's the bathroom? I don't know. That's all, yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Is uh, is English common in Venezuela, or is it like mostly Spanish? It's mostly Spanish, but I was lucky enough. I was fortunate enough you know, that I was, uh, you know, to, to have had the opportunity to, to travel, you know, to the U S and, um, you know, at the time, you know, when, I, when, when, it, cause like I studied in the U S from 2008 until 2014. 
So at that time, my country's economy was not that bad. But, you know, it wasn't until 2014 that, you know, the, my, cur- the, my country's currency, the Bolivar, started to get, like, extremely devalued. And that's when, you know, things started to... Because, like, every time a currency devalu- gets devalued, inflation rates automatically go up, go through the roof. And everything starts to cost, uh, you know, like a lot. And also, for instance, whatever you purchase today, uh, you know, for five bucks in the U.S., let's let's just as an example. So the following week, it's going to cost like double, you know, and then in the following week and the next week, you know, it it starts to go up and up, you know, the the, the prices, it, it just never stops. Wow. And it becomes, you know, it gets to the point where you basically pay like a bunch of money for just like something that used to cost little to nothing, you know, little to no money. So it, it's, it's fucked up. And because of that, my mom couldn't afford, you know, having me studying abroad any longer. And that's why I had to abandon my studies and, and come back home. So, yeah. Right. So do you have any sort of income at all? Well, um, my mom has like a pension. So like she's retired, you know, okay. and, um, you know, we get that, you know, that stream, stream income stream. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, because of my health condition, I haven't, you know, had the, the, I don't know, the will, you know, to, to like look for jobs out there. Cause like, even though I've had like a 90% recovery, I still deal with symptoms, you know? And because of that, like, I guess I'm going to have to start, you know, at some point or another, I'm going to have to start, you know, looking for jobs and whatnot. Um, but like, as of right now, I'm, you know, I'm basically leaving off, um, uh, you know, the goodwill of some people, you know, out there that have made, um, you know, PayPal contributions. And I have the link, the pay, my PayPal link on both of my channels. And, um, you know, it's, it's out there, you know, and whoever, you know, is watching this and, and might, you know, wants to make a, a donation, I, I would truly, you know, appreciate it. And it would be nice <laughs> for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when finding a job in Venezuela nowadays, is that nearly impossible due to the way the economy is? It's not that it's impossible. It's that no matter how hard you work, it's just never, you never make enough money to make ends meet. Right. You know, that's the problem. Things cost so much nowadays. That is just, you know, like, yeah, even if you have like multiple jobs, it's just, you know, you could work as hard as, as you want, but you, you're just never going to be able to fucking, you know, make ends meet, man. It's just horrible. Yeah. It's... And that basically, that's, that's why a lot of people down here, we're all basically, um, you know, dependent I don't, I don't know if that's even a word of of our government we we you know we we wait you know every month we wait for this box with uh like a bunch of you know contains a lot of like kind of like a little a little grocery you know uh shopping i don't know like products you know that you would usually like essential you know products that you would you know, uh, purchase at any convenience store or whatever. So, you know, you, you get that every single month because the government knows, you know, the our government knows that the people are like really struggling and, you know, we all, you know, get that kind of help, but still, man, it's just, it's just horrible. Yeah. Our, situ- our, our economic situation overall, like people down here are, are having it really bad, really tough. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I could imagine. It's so 
the concept of of what you guys are going through is so far removed from what you know is going on in Canada. I can't even imagine what it would be like to live like that. It's just it's crazy. And I would have even never even known about it until I started talking to you, you know, a while back. Like it's not something that makes the news. Yeah, like like I can I can honestly say that whatever like in any of those like tech tech de- techy devices that you have on you know in in your room um, in your studio like if you sell like a- any of those devices like is literally worth as much as a Venezuelan's life <laughs> you know it's, it's definitely worth more than my life you know because like seriously you sell anything out there you know out there in canada or the us or europe or whatever you know it's like our currency is so fucking devalued that seriously like you know whatever you like any any money that i get from from my donations it, it basically turns into like a bunch of money down here because you know our currency is like extremely devalued and i don't know man this is it's so horrible so yeah i could imagine but uh let's change gears a bit here and let's not let's not get too depressive on the on you know talking about venezuela i want to talk about sweaty balls for a second you ever get sweaty balls? <laughs> well, not that much because I don't move. I don't move around, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, that much. So, but I'm sure that if I had a job, you know, if I had to, like, you know, to yeah. have, if I had a nine nine to five job, I I would get sweaty balls. <laughs> right. I would not imagine, yeah. Right. Well, I only bring it up because you brought it up a while back that you had some sort of solution. Right? Yeah, but not not for sweaty balls though. I I was talking about Oops. a solution for ball scratching. Ball you know? scratching, so that's what I, it was. Ball scratching. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Let's talk about scratching <laughs> your balls. <laughs> okay, so here here it is. If you if your balls scratch or itch a lot. Something that actually helps, you know, with the itching is putting your balls in in hot water, in like really, or you know, let hot water, like really hot water, you know, almost to like a boiling. Well, not not to a boiling point, because like mm. obviously, you know, you you don't want to burn yourself, <laughs> but you know, like really, really hot water, you spray it on your balls and it. You know, it stops the itching, or it, it helps. At the very least, it, it helps. So yeah, that's that's a technique that I've been using for for a very long time. How did you figure that out? I don't know. One time, I I, I, I went into the shower and I get in, I jumped in in the shower and um, it, it it worked. You know, I I put uh, I let the you know hot water t- you know um get on my balls and and it helped huh now i don't really have much of a itchy ball problem i find my issue is my asshole my asshole itches more than anything so i'm always shoving fingers up my ass asshole all the time but i have a really hairy ass like like it's like a jungle down there you know shit's getting stuck in there all the time i gotta pick the shit out of the hairs it's it's disgusting. You might you might actually you might actually be the perfect um, you know match for this guy uh, you know the the new the new guy the YMH. Oh, is, I don't even like, say it. Yeah, you're Norman, talking about Norm, right? <laughs> Are you talking about Norm? Yeah. <laughs> you mean that guy who shits and pisses on his poutine and then eats it? Yeah. The pig? <laughs> you, could, you could be the perfect match for these guys. <laughs> that pig, Norman. You know that guy was a real estate agent? Yeah, I heard that. And not only that, story. not only that, but that guy lives in Calgary, which is like only three hours away from me. 
So I mean, if I did want to go see him, I could I could just drive over there right now, and I'm sure he'd be willing to, you know, serve me up some poutine. <laughs> yeah, or maybe maybe you could, you know, um, ser- serve him your poutine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's nothing more disgusting than someone who eats their own shit. Let me just tell you. And I will say, on that YMH episode, they don't actually show him shitting on the poutine, but you can subs- you can you can subscribe to their their uh not safe for work version of the podcast, and you can watch him shit on the poutine. And I w- I did. I did, I did watch him shit on the poutine, and let me tell you, it's not worth it. I don't recommend watching it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with Tom and Christina nowadays. Like they're getting progressively more more involved in in disgusting shit. But I mean, it's still funny. They're still hilarious. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of the show, man. Like I. <laughs> I didn't know of, of its of its existence, you know, for ever. But you know, be prior to to me being featured on there. But holy shit, like it's like the funniest show ever. Honestly, I'm I'm a huge fan for yeah. sure. Do you have you watched Tom Segura's uh, comedy special? Do you have Netflix? Yeah. Well, no, I don't have Netflix, but. You know, funny, interestingly enough, you can actually find it for free online. Yeah, you know? I'm sure you can, yeah. And as soon as as soon as it as it came out on Netflix, I, I was able to find it online, you know, streaming online for free. So, you know. Yeah. Okay. I however I couldn't find Bert's. I couldn't find Bert's uh, you know, um, special, but I could I could find uh, Ball Hog. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure Tom Segura will appreciate that you pirated his content. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I, di- I didn't pirate it anything. Like, it was already in, you know, online. So I just looked it up on Google, you know, yeah. all hog, you know, streaming online. And it's just, you know, I just clicked on, on the link and that was it, you know. So Yeah. And he had... Like my first time watching it, I didn't even notice it. But the after I watched him talk about it, he has like a a really stupid amount of makeup on, and he kind of looks like a like one of those Japanese dolls or something. And I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even notice it the first time. But if you watch it back, yeah. you can totally see that he's got a stupid amount of makeup on his face. Right, right. I, I didn't really notice it either. In and to be honest with you, I don't think people care. Like, like deep down, we all look for his content, you know, just to to get a good laugh out of it. You know, like I was not paying attention to his fucking face. Yeah, I, I was either. paying attention to to what he was saying. You know, to like the jokes that he was making and stuff. So yeah, same, same here. Yeah, like his true fans didn't notice it's the people who are not fans of them that really pointed it out yeah uh so the final question i have for you is what is your goal now what are your dreams what do you want to accomplish well my plans as of as of right now are to continue you know like recording recording new new songs and um to the st- extent of my abilities because keep in mind you know i i still deal with symptoms and you know i don't i'm not able to even though i i, st- I do have a bunch of like new material you know written down you know like the, the lyrics and stuff for for new songs i you know i always have to wait for like perfect time you know to record and um because it's not easy it's not easy for me you know to to sing you know i i have to i have to like first make sure to to have enough money to purchase some vitamins you know like and these are like basic vitamins like 
vitamin C, vitamin B, you know, uh, you know zinc, magnesium, and, and th things of this, this nature, like folic acid, you know, and they do help me, like, gain, regain, like, some strength, and this, this is what, you know, basically helps me, you know, uh, sing or continue to sing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not able to sing all the time. And this is, you know, why I'm, I'm also looking for people out there that, you know, would be willing to make some, you know, PayPal contributions because, um, that way I could use that money to, to not only to like, you know, buy food and the essentials, you know, but also to purchase like, you know, the vitamins that I need to not, not just to feel better, you know, but also to, to sing, you know, and continue to record new stuff. So, right. And so people can find you on YouTube at Kyle C and your paypal oh, information sorry my battery is like going is yeah. dying right now hold on a second let me oh, yeah fuck. plug her in yeah i got it fuck something's uh, hold on a second let me oh shit uh, this really sucks <laughs> and i'm just like ah fuck I don't know where to, where to place the fucking phone. Hold on a second. You got, you got children yeah. outside? Yeah. That's why I'm Hold on a second. There's this kid that is always like crying all the fucking time. It really sucks. <laughs> is he your neighbor? Yeah, yeah. I don't know where to put my fucking phone. There's no, there's not a, like a socket, you know, nearby. Is you don't. Shit. <laughs> yeah. You don't have a spot to plug it in the wall. I do, but not close to where the light is. So. Well, we don't need that much light. Hold on a second. Fuck. This is going to be like a really shitty interview, huh? No, it's been going good. We'll cut all this out. <laughs> is that your bed? if we could do this again someday in the future I don't know yeah absolutely are you plugged in I think so yeah do you see me now I do see you I can see your chest okay. oh my god okay so if people want to find you on the internet is it that is it just Kyle C on like Instagram and YouTube? Um, yeah, Kyle C for you. Yeah, that's right. And all your PayPal information's on your YouTube page. Both of my both of my YouTube uh, channels. Yeah, that's the that's where the PayPal link is. I also have it on on Instagram, but. In Facebook, um, but um, I, I don't think you can actually click on on anything on Instagram. So even though like I have it, you know, I posted the link on um, um, Instagram. Phone. Yeah, I posted the link uh, um, as as a caption to one of my to one of my pictures. Right, but um. I uh, you know, is it, 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 I, I don't think you can click on it, 
you know, I don't know. In- Instagram, Instagram has like a, like something that prevents people from like clicking on things. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta put it in your description on your like the home page of your Instagram. Right, like the the bio. Yeah, the, the bio. bio. Uh, but the, the thing is, that's where I have the link to my YouTube channel. So I'm not going to, you know, compromise that, you know, like I'm, I'm going to use it for, for the, you, you know, for the right. YouTube channels. Okay, so this is the end of the show here. I am going to hand the baton over to you. If you have any questions you want to ask me or if there's anything you want to say or do, now's your time to shine. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. It's funny. Okay, so I was just thinking uh, that, I don't know, to perhaps uh, do a little bit of singing, you know, and um, just show you or, or show the, the YMH fans out there that might come across this interview. Um mm-hmm. Like as some songs that I, you know, came up with, you know, uh, so yeah, absolutely. Okay, I want nothing more than that. So the, the first one is uh, about the Cool Guy Club. Yes, you know that you. Um, I love the Cool uh, Guy yeah. Club. <laughs> Okay, so here, here it goes. <laughs> Fuck, this is funny. Um, you, my friend, are a very cool guy. You, my friend, are a very cool guy. Oh. My friend, are a very cool guy, guy, guy. You, my friend, are a very cool guy. You, my friend, are a very cool guy. Oh. My friend, our very cool guy, guy, guy. In the name of our club, we gotta represent. In the name of our club, we gotta represent. In the name of our club, we gotta represent the cool guy club. The cool guy. In the name of our club, we gotta represent. In the name of our club, we gotta represent. In the name of our club, we gotta represent the cool guy club. The cool guy. In the name of our club. In the name of our club. In the name of our club. The cool guy club, the cool guy in the name of our club, club in the name of our club, club in the name of our club, club, the cool guy club, the cool guy club. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) Fantastic. So that's the Cool Guy Club song that I, that I, you know, came up with. And there's another one that is like a tribute to Fed Smoker. Yeah, so... I love Fed Smoker. <laughs> okay, so here it goes. <laughs> Don't know what made you mad. You didn't follow proto, but you had a baby raper stamp on your ass. You lit your hair on fire, popped your teeth out, you seen the knife. You, we're gonna miss your crazy videos online. Whoa, feather and head in heaven, feather and head in heaven, feather and head in heaven, angels chant, please don't burn our wings, feather and head in heaven, feather and head in heaven, feather and head in heaven, angels chant, please don't burn our wings when you're further in the brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah very good excellent oh, <laughs> what 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 are the lyrics what are you saying i can't understand what you're saying after feather in it um so at the beginning is like um 
You, you know, said, don't like, know what made you mad. Yeah, I get, I get that part. But when you say feather in it in heaven, what's the words after that that you're saying? <laughs> Shit, I'm so sorry. Angels chant. Oh. Angels chant. Angels chant. A- angels chant. I don't know. English is my second language. Yeah, no, so no, no. I, I understood everything you said other than that part. Yeah, angels chant. Please don't burn, don't burn our wings. You know, right? Like they, they're telling the guy, you know, please don't burn our wings. <laughs> it's <laughs> very good. I really enjoy it. Oh god! And uh, yeah, so to end, you know, this um, this interview, I think it, it, it's only fair for me to like sing the charo song. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. Here it goes, man. I'm ready. <clears throat> charo, charo, charo. Oh, do you need some churros, churros, churros to give us funds? One of those long farts, give us funds. One of those long farts, because they're amazing. They're amazing. You're by far the queen of farts. You're by far the queen of farts, 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 farts. Charo, charo, charo. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. You're very good. Oh, it's so funny, man. <laughs> you're you're very good. I like I like everything you do, and I think you're doing it a great you're doing it a great way too. You're, uh, you know, I think. I think we're both going to blow up one of these days. You know, we're both we're both benefiting from what's happening right now. And I feel like what's happening right now on this podcast is going to go down in history. And people are going to, you know, use this podcast as a reference as to the two greatest people on the planet. People who came from nothing and turned themselves into something useful. The guy who talks about butthole, sings about buttholes and and sex, and then the other guy who wears the stupid shirts, and he's got the penis mushrooms. Anyway, I think that I think that's a good place to end. What do you say? Can I add though, um, the first time that I saw your podcast, and by the way, I'm a huge fan of your of your podcast. Well, I, you. I think you're pretty awesome. You run it very well. It's thank super you. entertaining. Um, but um, the first time that I saw the background that you had, like I felt, I felt like you, you were like, you know, getting ready to get gang banged by like a bunch of aliens because those little mushrooms they do look like little dicks, you yeah, know. So um, yeah, so I was like, holy shit! Like, I found it hilarious, you know, that that you were like literally surrounded by a bunch of like green dicks. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, that you know, that's one of the reasons why I love mushrooms so much. Because I'm obsessed. Because they look like dicks. Yeah, I'm obsessed with penises. Oh my god. <laughs> These aren't even mushrooms. These are just weird dicks. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would agree with that. Yeah, you should. You should try mushrooms one of these days. <laughs> I'm talking about the psychedelic ones. Anyway, uh, I think I'm crazy enough, though. Like, I don't, I don't think I need any more drugs because I, I think I'm like crazy enough. Yeah, you might be right. <laughs> okay, well, that's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, Kyle C, for coming on. I appreciate it, and we'll got to do it again sometime. Absolutely. Uh, so with that being said, please like, comment, subscribe, uh, smash that bell notification, bitch, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>